Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I don't know if you guys were watching it from earlier, but earlier we did this, but the Wi-Fi stopped and it deleted the whole video. So we're going to repeat the video so everybody could see it. Last week we talked about the Prophet, his prophethood from age 40 to the age of 63. Insha'Allah today we're going to be talking about the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفْوٌ أَحَدٌ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Imam Ali alayhi salam was born on the 13th of Rajab in the year 601 AD in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Imam Ali's parents, his mother Fatima bint Asad and his father Abu Talib who was the uncle of Rasulullah and Imam Ali alayhi salam wasn't born in any normal spot like most of us are born in a hospital. Imam Ali alayhi salam was born in the Kaaba. The reason he was born in the Kaaba was because his mother Fatima bint Asad, somebody would say she was walking by the Kaaba, somebody would say she was praying. But what the stronger one is she was walking by the Kaaba. So she was walking by the Kaaba and she felt like she was about to give birth. So the Kaaba like cracked and she went into the Kaaba and she gave birth to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Somebody would state she was in there for three days. Somebody would state she was in there for four days. So it was around three to four days. It was in that in that range. So three to four days. And she gave birth in there. And she left from the Kaaba. And the person waiting outside the Kaaba was Nabi Muhammad. Muhammad. Like I said earlier, Abu Talib was the uncle to Nabi Muhammad. So they were really close. Like they were family. That's how close they were. So Rasulullah saw Imam Ali alayhi salam. And Rasulullah is the one that named Imam Ali alayhi salam Ali. He named him Ali. At, from the age of zero to the age of five, nothing really happened in the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam until the age of five, where the Prophet started, like was the legal guardian of Imam Ali alayhi salam. So Imam Ali alayhi salam, like he loved the Prophet from such a young age. He loved the Prophet. And he would follow the Prophet everywhere he would go. Like let's say the the Prophet went to Cave of Hira, Imam Ali alayhi salam would stay and go with him to Cave of Hira. Even if he stayed there for three days, four days, he would he would stay with him the whole time. That's how that's how like how much he loved the Prophet. That's how close they were. Their relationship was amazing. That Imam Ali would follow him everywhere. So pretty much if you wanted to see the Prophet, you're saying Imam Ali alayhi salam with him as well. That's how it was. And around the age of from the around from age five to age twenty, nothing really happened just like age zero to five nothing really happened until the age of 20 is when rasulullah wanted to leave mecca to go to medina because people were out for him his message was spreading and just like they did with the other prophets they wanted to kill uh, kill rasulullah so this was when he was in mecca and they would be guarding mecca like bordering around mecca with people ready to kill rasulullah so he wouldn't be able to leave so Rasulullah told Imam Ali, Imam Ali, can you please sleep in my bed so I can be able to leave Mecca without people noticing? Imam Ali alayhi salam responded and said, Rasulullah, if I sleep in your bed, would you be able to get out of Mecca safely? Rasulullah said, yes, I will be able to leave Mecca safely and migrate to Medina. Imam Ali alayhi salam thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving him this opportunity to keep Rasulullah safe. Now, Rasulullah made it safely to Medina, but that wasn't the same for Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali alayhi salam went, and there was a few people that saw him leaving, so they went after him. But eventually, Imam Ali alayhi salam lost him, and they didn't see him. And Imam Ali alayhi salam was the only reason that Rasulullah was actually able to migrate to Medina, because if it wasn't for Imam Ali alayhi salam sacrificing, like giving, like sacrificing his life by sleeping in Rasulullah's bed. Rasulullah would have never been able to go to Medina. So when Imam Ali made it to Medina, Rasulullah gathered all the people, and just like he did with Zayd ibn al-Harith, how he told the people, Zayd ibn al-Harith is my son, so now his name is Zayd ibn Muhammad. He did the same thing with Imam Ali, except he said that Imam Ali is his brother now. So he gathered the people, and he said, my new brother is Imam Ali. That's, that's to the point that they were close. They were so close. And... He stayed 13 in Mecca, and this was his 10 years in Medina. So from the age 21 through 25, Imam Ali, Imam Ali married Sayyidah Fatima. 
and they had four children together and from somebody way I'd say it was 25 somebody way I'd say 23 somebody way I'd say 21 but it was from the age of 21 through 25 that's all it was Imam Ali was like so active in the community of Medina like he would be the bearer of the flag so like when they would go into battle he would hold the flag up he would be so active he would be helping the poor he would be helping people that were needy first it was islam second was rasulullah's life and third was his own life if you guys notice i put rasulullah's life in front of imam ali's life that's how imam ali felt he put rasulullah's life in front of his own so in the battle of Badr, this was when Imam Ali Alayhi Salam this like let people know his strength. So it was the battle of Badr and there was somebody that was extremely strong. His name was Walid ibn Utbah. And Rasulullah said, Who wants to go fight Walid? There was a lot of Muslims. He, uh, Imam Ali raised his hand. Rasulullah asked again, Who wants to go fight Walid ibn Utbah? What did Imam Ali do? He raised his hand again. Rasulullah asked for the third time. Who wants to go fight Walid ibn Atba? Imam Ali raised his hand. He had his hand raised all three times. He had his hand raised. And Rasulullah told him, you can go fight Walid. Imam Ali, it was a quick like 30 second fight. And Imam Ali, right away, he killed Walid ibn Atba. And after that, the battle went on normally. And then came Battle of Uhud. If you guys have been tuning into the other episodes, you guys know Battle of Uhud. I talked about it in the time of Rasulullah, and we'll talk about it in the time of Imam Ali. So Battle of Uhud was fought on Mount Uhud, and it was when Imam Ali proved that he put the Prophet's life in front of his own life. So everybody, all, almost all the Muslims except four Muslims, fled the, fled the mountain. There was Imam Ali, Hamza, and two other Muslims. So it was four total. And there was a prophet, which makes it five. So Imam Ali was defending the prophet so fiercely that there is a way to state that he he had almost ninety wounds just from defending the prophet. From defending the prophet, he he acquired ninety wounds, and they say that there was angels coming down and picking up his wounds. Like let's say a piece of skin fell, the angels would come and repair that piece of skin. So Imam Ali was defending the prophet so fiercely that his own sword broke. When his own sword broke, the Prophet handed Imam Ali السلام, his own sword, which is known as Zulfiqar. Now, after that, Imam Ali defended the Prophet fiercely. The Prophet did take some damage, but like if it wasn't for Imam Ali, the Prophet would have would have died. So Imam Ali السلام, saved the Prophet's life again. From from around that happened in around 6:30, and more battles happened, like Battle of Hunain, Battle of uh, the book happened but those were before so it became 632 and this was the prophet's last pilgrimage the pilgrimage is the hajj where people go and they walk around the kaaba and so this was rasulullah's last pilgrimage so when he came back from his last pilgrimage there's a way that say hundred thousand a hundred fifty thousand people were there and this is also known as bayat al ghadir where rasulullah held up imam ali's hand like that He's like my kid to Ali Maulahu. What this means is, is whoever's leader I was, your new leader is Imam Ali Alayhi Salam. And a few days after Bayat al Ghadir, there's the ways that say that Rasulullah was poisoned. So Rasulullah died a few days later. But before Rasulullah died, what did he tell Imam Ali Alayhi Salam? He told Imam Ali, before you go and do anything, gather the whole Quran. What he means by that is like, the Qur'an, it all came down, but it wasn't gathered like this. Like right now, if you open this Qur'an to the first page, it's going to be Surah 1, Surah Al-Fatiha. If you open it to the back, it's going to be Surah 114, Surah Al-Nas. So it goes from 1 to 114. Back then, at right when the Prophet died, it was not gathered. He told Imam Ali alayhi salam to gather the Qur'an and make it a book. So it's going to be starting from Surah 1 to Surah 114. That's what he told Imam Ali to do. And he, Imam Ali did that. But while Imam Ali was preparing the funeral for the Prophet, and while he was gathering the Quran, there was Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, the Ashab al they were They were fighting with the other tribes on who the new Khalifa was going to be. And when the Prophet was alive, which is so surprising, when the Prophet was alive, they were all loyal to the Prophet. They acted so good to the Prophet. But when the Prophet passes, 
and dies, they all want to change. So while Imam Ali was preparing and doing what the Prophet told him, there was those three going to decide who the new leader was going to be. But that didn't stop Imam Ali from doing what the Prophet told him to do. But some say 40, some say 90, but from 40 through 90 days after the Prophet's death, Umar, Umar and Uthman charged through the door of Sayyidah Fatima. They tried knocking before their Sayyidah Fatima opened the door, opened the door. And the door wasn't like it is now. Like right now it's a regular door, it's just a piece of wood. Back then there used to be spikes on the doors. There used to be like hard stuff on the door. So if you get pushed behind the door, you're going to damage yourself. So when they tried knocking on the door telling Sayyidah Fatima to open the door, she didn't want to open the door. She said, no, I'm not going to open the door. So they came and they charged through the door. And when they charged through the door, who was still behind the door? Sayyidah Fatima. So it was the door and behind the door, Sayyidah Fatima, and she was getting pushed against the wall. So it was like this. In the, let's say this is the door, this is the wall. In between was Sayyidah Fatima getting squished because Umar and Uthman charged through the door. Now, you guys, a lot of people said, oh, where was Imam Ali alayhi salam at the time? Where was he? Sayyidah Fatima didn't want to even tell Imam Ali about this. You want to know why? Because she knew that if Imam Ali found out about this, it was over for Umar and Uthman. They were, they were going to be dead. They're dead at that point. But at the time, Sayyidah Fatima was pregnant with Sayyid Muhsin. And Umar and Uthman also killed Sayyid Muhsin. And they also killed Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam. So they killed Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam and Sayyid Muhsin. When Imam Ali found out about Sayyidah Fatima's death, which was 632 AD through 656 AD, he did not care anymore. The only two things that were on his mind were Rasulullah, Sayyidah Fatima. Only two things on his mind. And that's how much he loved them. He, those were the only two things on his mind. So there was Abu Bakr that took Khalifa after Abu Bakr died. Imam Ali didn't even care about being the next Khalifa. He didn't care. He didn't he didn't engage in any political affairs. He he just helped other needy people, but he didn't care about what the Khalifa was. So it, Abu Bakr was a Khalifa. He died. He did nothing for Islam. He was corrupt. Umar came into Khalifa next. What did he do? He was corrupt. Same thing. Uthman came. He was corrupt. Same thing. Nothing happened. So then, after the people started realizing, oh, Imam Ali was the real Khalifa, we gotta go back and we gotta make Imam Ali Khalifa. Because after they realized Abu Bakr did nothing other than corrupt corrupt the, the, the city of Mecca and Medina, they realized he did nothing. Umar did the same thing and Uthman did the same thing. They were just killing people. They're like, oh, we gotta get Imam Ali. So from 656 through 661 was the reign of Imam Ali. And he was he was adil, like he was fair and he people would the poor the poor the people on the streets would be eating better than the khalifa at the time imam ali they would be eating better than him omar they say when omar died and uthman went into khalifa he found over 10 million 10 million like dollars for himself if imam ali had 10 million dollars just imagine what would happen there would be no no poor people on the street and Imam Ali would give it out, would give it out. He wouldn't keep it for himself. The poor were eating better than Imam Ali. And this started the first fitna because people thought, oh, oh since Uthman's dead, what does that mean? The person that comes after him is probably the one that killed him. So now let's go kill Imam Ali, alayhi salam. And the people that led that rebellion were Talha, Zubair, and Aisha, the wife of the Prophet. Now, when the Prophet one of the most things the prophet hated was somebody talking good about themselves like like pretty much talking good about themselves like oh i'm so rich oh i'm so good oh i'm so beautiful that's exactly what aisha did and the prophet hated hated when you like compliment yourself he always said let others compliment you don't compliment yourself don't get too full of yourself aisha would get so full of herself like she would brag oh i was the wife of the prophet if you were actually the wife of the prophet you would have manners and you, your iman level would be high. Her iman level, same as Talha, same as Zubair, were low. So this started the Battle of Basra. It was it was Imam Ali and his army versus Talha, Zubair, and Aisha. And Imam Ali and his army won that battle. And after that, Imam Ali السلام, was praying in Masjid al-Kufa. And Abdul Rahman ibn Murjam, they say 
that Imam Ali alayhi salam raised Abdurrahman ibn Mujlam. Like he he was pretty much his guardian. He raised him. Abdurrahman ibn Mujlam, Inatullah Ali, gave bay'ah to Imam Ali alayhi salam. He fought aside Imam Ali alayhi salam until one of the last battles. He went to the other. He went to become bad. He went to become a harami. He and he went into Masjid al Kufa. And there's so many ways that say he had a poison coated sword. He stabbed Imam Ali alayhi salam in the stomach. And there's some that say hit Imam Ali alayhi salam in the head. Now, Imam Ali alayhi salam, when he got hit into the head, who came right away? Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. When they came, they were all furious. Oh, how did Abdul Rahman ibn Muslim do this? How can he do this? So what did they say? We're gonna go kill him. We're gonna go kill him. And what did Imam Ali alayhi salam do? He's like, don't go kill him. Just hit him with an equal hit as he hit me. So what does that mean? Is he hit me in the head, you go hit him in the head. He lives, he lives. You guys pardon him, no, it doesn't matter anymore. He dies, he dies. So what does this show? Imam Ali alayhi salam doesn't do more damage than what was inflicted to him. So he got hit in the head, he's gonna go do the same damage back. He's gonna hit the person that hit him in the head. That's what it means. Now, this was the akhlaq of Imam Ali alayhi salam. This was the akhlaq of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He had the same akhlaq as Rasulullah, like I said earlier. The poor people would be eating better than Khalifa than the Khalifa. How surprising is that? Like Omar and Uthman and Abu Bakr, they never did any good. And Imam Ali, on his first day in the as a Khalifa, he did more good than all three of them put together. That's all I gotta say. And he was he was so respectful he thought he told people oh forgive each other don't make problems big he said don't do haram he he was like the rasulullah he had the same manners as rasulullah he was amazing and he didn't like i said he didn't do more damage that needed to be afflicted like he didn't really like to fight he was amazing at fighting but he wasn't like oh like, let's go fight like right away let's go fight not like muawiyah and Talha and Zubair and Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman, they were, they were quick to fight. Oh, let's go fight. Oh, let's go kill him. Let's go kill him. That's not how Imam Ali alayhi salam was. He would wait for the person to attack so he can go attack. Imam Ali alayhi salam never started a battle. That was one thing about Imam Ali. He never started a battle. So he would let the other person attack even when he was fighting Walid ibn Atta. Who attacked first? Walid attacked first and then Imam Ali attacked second. He doesn't want to like... He does. He wants it to feel fair. Like he attacked me first. Now I have permission to attack him. That's how Imam Ali alayhi salam was. He had amazing manners. He forgave a lot of people. He helped the poor. The poor ate better than him. He took poor people and he made them into normal people, wealthy people. That were the manners of Imam Ali alayhi salam, and that was the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, next week you guys can tab on it, four o'clock same time, every Thursday. Inshallah, next week we will be talking about Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Also, this Saturday, it is the istishhad Imam al Sadiq. Inshallah, at around prayer time after prayer time at around 10 o'clock i will be talking about imam al-sadiq assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh la tansuna min ad-du'a Inshallah, don't forget to Tabuna next week, Thursday, 4 o'clock for Dearborn time, Eastern time. And it's 11 o'clock for the people that are in Lebanon. And for Pacific, it's 1 o'clock. So if you're in like California, it's 1 o'clock. So yalla, assalamu alaikum, la tansuna, minad du'a.